Hey everyone, uh, I've had a comment on one of my videos saying please could I do a video on how to beat the French defence. Now if you're an E4 player then uh, it's very likely that you, you hate seeing the French. Um, so the French defence starts with E4 and then black replies with E6. So black's idea is that they're going to play D5. Um, you could swap off pawns there, that's the exchange variation. Very often like d5, uh, d4, and then c4 is the first main pawn break. Later on you may also get f6 coming up. Now a lot of people just simply don't like to face the French, so um, in spicy, gambity style, what can we do about the French? Now I'm going to give you two suggestions. Um, the first one I've already done a video on back in March, so about two months ago, which is the Ortho Schnapp Gambit. Um, so I've got Chess.com Explorer open here, and the Ortho Schnapp Gambit goes. Uh, so after e6, you play c4, and then from Black's perspective, as a French player, you're thinking this is all a bit odd, um, but the most common move is to continue with d5, as you can see. 497 master um, games have gone this way with d5, which is the normal second move for um, for black. Now, you can see that the most common move here for white is e takes d5. So we're in the Steiner variation, but um, slightly less common is c takes d5, and that leads to the author schnapp gambit. Okay. So uh, e takes d5 normally follows, and now if you look on the uh, the database, e takes d5 has been played 171 times at the master level with a 25% win rate for uh, for black, uh, 37 for white. But what we're looking at is queen b3, okay, and uh, this tends to do. Not so well at the at the master level. You can see here, there's six games. Five of them have been won by black after the move d takes e4. However, if you want to uh, put your opponents out of their comfort zone, so you can see here, I've played this uh, just three times so far, and white's won twice, black has won once with d takes e4. Okay. But the, the general idea is after this you can play your bishop out to c4 and um, if you're a Danish gambit player then this will be very, very familiar <coughs> excuse me, territory to you. Um, because you've got your queen and your bishop lined up here against f7. Black's probably going to want to play the queen to one of these two squares and uh, and so on. So, But I've done a separate video on the author schnapp gambit. But if you want a, a nice exciting, thrilling, spiky, sharp way to uh, counter the French and get your opponent straight out of their comfort zone, then this is definitely one way to go about it. But let me show you a second idea. Okay, and um, just go back a little bit. So with the French, e4, e6, okay? Now this is the wing gambit. And there's also a variation of this that you can play against the Sicilian with c5 on the first move. But c5 will, will very often come with the French. That's, that's a general kind of idea. Okay. So your opponent um, plays e6. Now you play knight to f3, just pretty much allowing c, uh, e c. So d5 here has been played 3,600 times by black. Okay, but then you've got c5, okay, which is the um, the Sicilian variation. Now, if your opponent plays d5 here, then you simply advance your pawn. So this is already slightly odd territory for a French player. Okay, so what you're going to see here, c5 at the master level has been played 1,028 times. Let's just switch it to my games. Okay, c5 has been played, is the most common, three times, and we've got one win, one draw, one loss so far, okay? But when they play c5, so I'm just starting to learn this one myself, okay? You now play b4, 
check that out. So this is very interesting. So like I say, I'm currently studying this at the moment, but this is a lovely way. So um, I haven't yet played this against human beings, but let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna use my notes that I've got. I'm gonna finish a game in the French here against a bot, so we'll choose Matteo. And um, so what I've done is I've lined this up in the on the analysis board, then you choose finish versus computer, and uh, there we go. So I'm going to choose Matteo, and it's my turn, <coughs> which is important. So I want to be white, so it has to be white's turn to play, and you play B4. <coughs> now the accepted line is the most usual, and there are a couple of approaches to this. The engine actually wants you to play D4, but uh, if you ever watch uh, Mio, the uh, the butcher, he's got his recommendation is actually A3 at this point. Uh, so that's the one that I'm working with, okay. And then, so variation B takes A3. I haven't actually figured this one out yet. <laughs> that is not in my, um, in my repertoire, but I think probably taking with the knight may be the way to go. But you can see this is already just not looking like, you know, we're not in France anymore, okay? So I should probably recapture the pawn. I think if if C takes, sorry, if the bishop takes, bishop takes, then knight takes, all we've really done is removed one of my bishops. And this is quite an open board, you know, you, you want bishops on the board. And also, I don't really want just to eliminate black's uh, dark square bishop there, because it just puts black one step closer to castling. So I'm thinking maybe d4 now makes some sense. Okay, it says d4 is best. And we have the queen out. So now it's saying it's pretty level, although I'm actually down two pawns. Right, so um, bishop to d2, kicking the queen, seems fairly logical. Okay, it says that's best, and now it's it's favouring white. Uh, bishops come out to block that. And now, I guess, I've got c3 to kick the bishop away. Looks good. Gives me a nice uh, little pawn chain here. And black has now pushed the pawn forward. Hmm-hmm. <laughs> that means I can actually capture the bishop and the queen can't recapture. If pawn takes knight, I can simply grab with the queen, I guess. Let's take the bishop, best move, and I'm already two and a half up in the, in the scoring. So the queen is now attacking this pawn, which is defended by the knight. Queen's attacking this pawn, which is defended by the bishop. So I'm actually not in any trouble here whatsoever. I've got queen a4 check which would probably just prompt the bishop to go there and block, or even the knight to go there and block. So I'm just giving black um, free free development there. Bishop to d3 is a common move here, but maybe I should also think about just saving my knight, so I could capture the pawn, or I could just develop my knight. Which is best? <coughs> um, can't develop my knight to here because it actually drops this pawn because it blocks the bishop's defense there. So I'm just going to grab grab the pawn. Okay. Engine likes that. And now it's got us absolutely winning in, what, 10 moves. Okay. So let's, um, let's see it through and see if we can actually convert this position. Okay, I'm inclined to play bishop d3. That looks solid. It says it's an inaccuracy. Knight to c3 was best here. Okay. So now he's got two attackers on there and two attackers on there. Hmm. So I could play my bishop here. Hmm. Bishop b3 defends this a second time but un completely undefends that one. However, 
is there really a good way to defend both? I don't know if there is. I guess, actually, you see bishop there, but there's still two attackers on this pawn. So I may, at this point, just be inclined to castle. I think if knight takes there, I've got rook b2 pinning the knight. So I'm inclined to try and save this pawn. So how about bishop c3 now? Bishop c3, if knight takes, I recapture. If knight takes here, I've got rook there. Okay, so I'm going to play bishop c3. Okay, it says it's good, but castling is best. And now... Ah, you see. If I play rook b2 now, black has capture on d3 with check, which is an annoyance. However, he's also attacking my rook. So if I play there, knight takes there, queen takes, my rook is actually protected by the dark square bishop, so let's try that. Okay, it wanted me to take the knight with the bishop, okay, that's fine. Queen takes b3 is best, and we're still in a winning position, I think. Time to castle now. Okay, we are over three points up. And I'm... We're doing okay, we're doing okay. <clears throat> so I've now castled. Um, Black's going to want to castle kingside, for sure. Bishop here prevents castling, which I do want to do as long as possible. He likes that. Okay, good. Now, I could actually capture the knight and prevent Black from castling at all, which is a thought. Uh, I'm not worried about queen coming down here, or here, or here, really. But then again, is this a good knight? Do I want to trade off my bishop for that, for that knight? Or do I just want to maybe improve my knight? Yeah, black still can't castle, so I think maybe move my knight to here. So I'd like to get a rook on there. I can't play this because I've got queen takes, queen takes, then rook takes queen, so I've just lost a rook that way. Um, how to proceed? Knight g5 is interesting, targeting that pawn. What's black going to do in that case? Or do I want to stop black from castling? and then try and simplify. Want to watch out that my queen and my rook are lined up. But right now that's not a threat. I think if a6 comes, I need to watch out for this bishop move. Let's simplify. Okay, it likes that, the computer likes that, that's good. So this is the way to train a new opening. I really like this, this method. Okay, I've got a check here. Uh, queen can't block, nothing can block, king can't go there, there or there, so the king's going to have to go back onto the back rank. I'm also here forking the pawn. Okay, it likes that as well. So I could grab the pawn now with the threat of that, with the rook, and hitting the queen and the bishop behind it. Back rank isn't too much of an issue. Let's grab the pawn and see what happens. Okay, computer says yes. All right, doesn't like that move. <clears throat> so I'm thinking that the queen comes to the back rank, I can't capture. Okay, if the queen comes here, I capture, rook captures is actually mate in two. Knight takes and then rook comes to here, so that's not really on the cards. <coughs> um, if rook takes queen to here, the rook's still defending that knight, unless I capture the bishop. But then I capture a bishop, lose a knight. Let's do it. Let's go in for the go for the throat. 
It likes that. Happy days. Okay. Now if I capture the bishop, he's got queen takes. How can I get a knight to guard that square? Let's play knight here. Likes that. Good. Okay, now the rooks come to the defence. So it's a very, you know, it's a very un-French game, this. So I'm thinking now maybe knight b3, lining up rook to c1 to defend that. Um, I've also got rook b8. And look, I'm pretty solid. I'm pretty solid down this side. Let's do rook b8 and try and simplify. Inaccuracy. Okay. I'm unconcerned. I'm just going to simplify off. Okay. So I've got two knights now against a bishop, and it's just time to try and finish off. Knight b3 is best. Okay. Uh, so now the knights need to move in. So I think knight b3 and then knight c5 looks good. Right, that's hitting the bishop. If I can get the bishop off, it's all good. Okay, that's not uh, viable. Good job. There's no pawn that can bother my knight right now. Uh, so it's just time, to, I think, to bring the king through. So knight g5 it liked. Okay. Keep moving the king up. Okay. I've got knight g5 hitting this pawn. Um, what else do I have? Thinking, bring my knights together. So this rook b1 is best. Okay. Okay, so now my knights are at least paired. That's okay. Defended by that. Um, don't have any checks. Okay, if you want to stop off rooks, that's all fine. Let's uh, now centralize the king. Throw it in a check. It's not, not too bad. Okay, and now I'm going to put my pawns onto a chain. There we go. You can attack me all you like. And let's go with the rook. King f4 is best. Hmm. And getting my knight into that little pocket looks very nice indeed. Okay, and there we go. I mean, you know, we're pretty much in a winning, completely winning position now. So, how do we finish? Got to check here. Whoa, okay, let's grab the pawn. And our rook here defends this pawn. It comes back. Okay, so the knight's guarding this square. I think we are getting close to a mate. Okay, there's a check. Uh, let's go here. It says mate in two. Capture. All right, and um, is that mate? I think it is. There we go. Checkmate. So there you go. If you're looking for a, a interesting and spicy way to reply to the French, then try this. It will catch your opponent off guard, and then you will be in your territory, in your preparation, and not theirs. So there you go. In response to your query, um, how can we beat the French defence? Have a go at this one. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm going to keep training at it. Um, because the, the French was causing me a little bit of trouble, like I think it does a lot of E4 players. So uh, I'll let you know how we get on. Please let me know if you try this wing gambit out yourself against the French defence. Um, leave a comment, uh, all that good stuff. <coughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Chess Bootcamp if you haven't subscribed. And see you soon.